have a car I don't drive very often, a 2003 Ford Crown Victoria. I started it up the other day and uh, the, the, the speedometer didn't work. I was driving along, the speedometer didn't work, the shifter was having trouble shifting. Check engine light came on and then the, uh, as I was getting back home, the overdrive light, the green overdrive light was blinking. I'm gonna scan the code here. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out what's going on. So it says I got one fault pending. I got a P720. Anything else? Well, I guess that's it. Well, I googled P0720 and it says the output speed sensor circuit is malfunction, and that sure makes a lot of sense. And uh, the symptoms are exactly what I had. Delayed shift, speedometer not working, check engine light illuminated, and here's the fix. The fix uh, output shaft speed sensor, wiring, transmission fluid sensor. Okay, well, we'll go have, have to go take a look at this. Let's go jack up the car and see what's going on. Okay, well, here we are. Here's the back of the transmission. You can kind of see the output shaft bolts on right there. And you can see right up in there. Let me zoom in on it. Right there, that's the baby. And uh, supposedly it needs an eight millimeter wrench. Let's see about taking that off and taking a look at it. Okay, now you can see the wrenches on there. Okay, I took out the sensor, and I want you to see the harness. Do you see the harness? Okay, you see those wires? The rat has chewed through those wires up there. You can see they're, they're just broken off. So that's our problem. Well, getting that speed sensor in there was a bear. I, the, the, the eight millimeter uh, bolt is what I did, is I, ha I found some glue. This is kind of like a goopy glue. And uh, it's kind of like a, you know sticky. It's kind of very waxy and sticky, but not a uh, permanent glue. I stuck it in the end there, and I glued the uh, the bolt into the end of the socket. And then I have uh, a universal adjustment without. And then I was able to get it in there and get it to work. So now we got to fix the wiring harness. So we got three options. We could go with like a, a wire nut and twist them together. That uh, uh, or we could take a and butt these uh, a butt connector, and then you crimp it. You put one wire in one end. You know, if you have to strip it, put one wire in it, one end, put another wire in there, and then you crimp it. Or this is what I'm thinking. Maybe I'll have. This is a thing to where you stick the two wires in there on each side, and then you close this, and this metal uh, bar comes down there, and it strips the the wire and connects the two wires together. And that could be the easiest one, so we got to fix that harness. Here's making a good connection that'll work outdoors for automotive uh, applications. I, I showed you these uh, solderless uh, terminals, uh, you know, the, the clips, the wire nuts. These really aren't very good. The best way to do it is to actually solder the wire. So we got like a soldering iron, we got some solder, electrical tape, and I love heat shrink tubing. And of course, uh, use a cigarette lighter with the heat shrink tubing. And let me show you how to make a real nice, reliable connection that'll be suitable for an automotive outdoor application. First of all, cut the wires so they're offset. You kind of you kind of see how this one's a half an inch longer than that one, and that way the two splices won't uh, line up to each other to make a big, huge bulb. Bulge will be a bulge here and a bulge there, and there's less danger of shortage. Then you start off by putting a big fat piece of heat shrink tubing down here, then maybe a slightly smaller piece of heat shrink tubing, and then each individual wire gets its own little piece of heat shrink tubing. So we're going to go ahead and solder this thing here and put this heat shrink tubing on there and, and maybe tape it up as well. It all starts with a good solid mechanical connection when you twist these things around, and now we'll solder it. And like I say, I showed you the pencil soldering iron. You could also use a, a gun type soldering iron. Okay, when you're soldering, the trick is, is first you heat up the work. So we're gonna put the soldering iron on here and get the wires nice and hot. And then once the wire is nice and hot, we'll put the solder into the, the copper wires 
And if it's up to temperature, it'll just soak right on in. There we go. Okay, now we'll slide the, the heat shrink tubing over the, the connection. And we'll take a, a, a cigarette lighter and, and melt the heat shrink tubing. where it's nice and tight, sealing up our exposed wires. Okay, we wrap the wires up with a nice layer of tape, and now we just slide on the next layer of heat shrink tubing. Once the wire is repaired, we hook up our scanner. And by the way, you can get, get them really cheap. I've seen $4, or actually $3 scanners. You, you go to like aliexpress.com, and they, ha they call them ELM 327. It's like ELM 327. They're three dollars and they pair up to your iPhone. So anyway, we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna to go to race. We're gonna press enter and we say yes, a race done. So now we'll rescan. And we see we have no we have zero codes. And we have no codes. So anyway, that, that's the final step of the job.